Hi, now, now there's a lot of people who know who you are, but there are, again, a lot of people who don't. Could you give us a little bit of a background of who you are? Well, of course, I've been around the newspaper business for a little while, a few years. Yeah, like 50-some-odd? 50, <laughs> very the odd years. You have, very odd years, but yeah, 50 years or more. And uh, I'm now connected with the Eagle Tribune and the Gazette. Right. I started with the Gazette right after high school, and I've been with them ever since. And they're kind of a... Wow. Do a My Haverhill column every Sunday. Now, what got yeah. you involved with uh, the folks at the Whittier Birthplace? Oh, it's just by doing features here, taking pictures. Back in 49, I did a full page. Wow. That got me started. And, of course, I was friendly with, <laughs> as friendly as you can get with an old teacher, with Don Freeman, who oh, was yes. active in the trustees here. Right. And it, it began to dawn on me after a while what I... Uh, what a great person Whitty really was in several ways. And so I've been actively involved, as you know, as we've been together on the Snowbound right, right. program that we've had and various other Whitty things that have been going on. What are we here for right here at the Whitty well, Birthplace? Well, I think this is a great place to show how Whitty grew up as a farm boy in Havel. Mm -hmm. Whitty Road here was the main road to Amesbury in 1807 when he was born. Right. There wasn't any 110 or... Uh, 495 of those days. Well, but this none was, of these cars. No, oh, yeah. none of these cars <laughs> like that going by. No, he was a farm boy. It was a Quaker family, and it was a. He was brought up in the beliefs of the Quakers, with peace and equality and that sort of thing. And you can you see even now how countrified we are out here, with right. very few signs of civilization beyond this actual farm. And this is the atmosphere he grew up in. So uh, he. Uh, he got his learning early on in a small village school right down the road. Mm -hmm. But he, his intellect was such that it, it grew from here. But it was the principles of the Quaker family who were never raided by the Indians because of their beliefs and their, the fact that they established themselves as friends. Could you give us a little uh, background on the farmhouse itself? The house is just the way it was when Whittier was, was born and lived here. Um, it was... Of course, it was built by the Whittier family about three generations before he came along. Hmm. And uh, the family was oriented to this section of the city. Yeah. And he, uh, it was a working farm. Yeah. The Whittier trustees bought this in about 1890 mm -hmm. and have worked hard to preserve it the way it was when he was born. They got a lot of his original uh, furniture and... Uh, right. Try to keep the atmosphere the way it was, and it seems to have worked. Well, we've changed our location. We're still at the Whittier birthplace. Uh, right now, we're right across the street from the from the homestead. What's the story on the barn? Well, it's, it's kind of interesting. There was a kind of a disturbed boy from this neighborhood mm -hmm. a few years ago who set fire to the original barn. Well, wow. but to keep things authentic, the trustees who bought this place and have kept it in great repair, when, uh, conducted a whole search around all New England and found a barn that almost exactly matched it. Wow. If you look at the old paintings, hmm. you think it was the same barn. And uh, so they've restored it. They kept it here to keep that farm atmosphere.